We've just been looking at how to use this equation, which is the absolute and apparent magnitude method, in order to find the, calculate the distance to a star. Right? So m minus m equals 5 log d over 10. Let's do an example. So here we have the star Vega. Now Vega is a star that is part of what we call the summer triangle sometimes. It's just an asterism. It's just, it's just a sort of pattern of stars in the sky. But Vega is actually very, very bright. And uh, so it's part of Vega and Deneb and Altair. I don't know if you know your constellations, but Vega is part of uh, Lyra, and you know Deneb is part of the, the Swan, and so on. But if we look at this particular star, Vega, it has an apparent magnitude of 0 0.03. It has an absolute magnitude of 0.58. How did they guess this? Um, well, you could use that like in the same method we were learning before. You could use the HR diagram in order to try to determine this. So you could take the spectrum of the star to tell you the temperature. And from the temperature, you use the HR diagram to tell the um, absolute magnitude. Because on the HR diagram, um, which I think I showed you before, if we looked at the HR diagram, on this axis goes luminosity or we also have apparent, uh, absolute magnitude on this scale. So see, if you knew the temperature, then you know, if you knew it was a main sequence star, then you could say, oh, I would take the spectrum, I would get the temperature, and from there, if it's a main sequence one, I would go up here, go over to the left, and say, aha, that matches with some absolute magnitude value. In this case, it would be 0.58. So the question is, what is Vega's distance from us? So let's take a look at this and see if something or anything makes any sense here. So what we could say is this. Well, first of all, its um, absolute magnitude is not equal to 0 0.03. If you think about it that way, that means see, if the absolute magnitude was 0 0.03 and the apparent magnitude was 0 0.03, then you would know that its distance was 10 parsec. Why is that? That's how the absolute magnitude is defined. Right? Absolute magnitude was when the distance is 10. So what we can actually tell is that because the apparent magnitude here is 0 0.03, that tells you this is actually brighter. Okay, so that means it actually appears brighter. What we can do then is infer from that, I don't know if this makes any sense, but we can actually infer that its distance is actually going to be less than 10 parsec. Now if that doesn't make any sense to you, no problem. What we can do is we can just calculate it. So let's use the equation. So we use the equation, it goes m minus m equals 5 times log of d over 10. We'll just use that one. So if we use this, then let's look at this. Apparent magnitude, oh, well apparent magnitude, that's just little m. And absolute magnitude, that's big M. So I know that little m is 0 0.03, so 0 0.03 minus 0 0.58 that equals 5 log of d over 10. The whole goal is to solve for d if I want the distance. All right, well, 0 0.03 minus 0 0.58, that's going to be, let's see, that'll be negative 0 0.55. That'll equal 5 log of d over 10. So I've just calculated this minus this. Well, then I want to get d by itself, so I have to do a few things now. I need to do some algebra skills in order to try to get rid of stuff, in order to get d by itself. I'm first going to get rid of the 5, and the 5 is multiplying this log d over 10. So in order to get rid of it, if I divide both sides of the equation by 5, then I'll get negative 0.55 divided by 5. That would give me negative 0.11 equals log of d over 10. Now, here comes the sort of sneakier part. How do you undo a log? You can't just divide both sides by log because logarithm is a mathematical function. Log doesn't really exist on its own. You have to say log of something. So you can't just divide by log. That doesn't make any sense. You can't just do that. You have to undo a log. Now, if you have a TI-84 or one of these TI-83s or things like that, um, there's a nice easy trick for this one. I don't know if your calculator has this, but it's a really handy thing that over here, if you look at the button for log, look what's in sort of blue for it. It's 10 to the x, and that tells you that 10 to the something undoes log. Just like x squared is the opposite of square root, and square root is the opposite of x squared.
just like natural logarithm here is the opposite of e to the x, just like e to the x is the opposite of natural log. Same thing with sine and inverse sine, cos inverse cos, and tan inverse tan. I think that's really handy how your calculator has that, at least the TI-84 and the TI-83 and some of the other ones from Texas Instruments. Take a look at your calculator if they give you that sort of handy help. Because if I want to get rid of a log, I take 10 to the power of. So that means 10 to the power of negative 0.11 is going to be the same as 10 to the power of log of d over 10. And I just told you, 10 to the power of undoes log. So that means 10 to the power of this thing just leaves us with nothing exciting on the right. It just leaves us with d over 10. But I have to say 10 to the power of negative 0.11 here. Because right, that's how we do this. We take 10 to the power of both sides. So 10 to the power of this, well, that's whatever this is. And 10 to the power of log, that just, they undo each other, so you get just d over 10. So if I want to solve for d on its own, we'll have d divided by 10. So all I have to do then is multiply both sides of the equation by 10. That's because a 10 on the top here, 10 divided by 10 would just give you 1. That's why it disappears. And that means I multiply by 10 over here. That means I can say that d equals 10 times 10 to the power of negative 0.11. Now you might think, oh, that's easy. Then I just multiply 10 times 10 and make it 100 to the power of negative 0.11. And you would be wrong. The reason is you have to remember your order of operations. Order of operations tells you that you have to do the exponent first. So you'd have to calculate 10 to the power of negative 0.11 uh, first and then multiply that answer by 10. That is the way to do it. So I'll get out my trusty calculator here to help me out, and I'm going to calculate that. So 10 to the power of negative 0.11. I'm gonna to try to calculate that first. I get this answer. I'm gonna multiply that by 10. Well, of course, that's just gonna move the decimal over. So I get 7.76, da 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 da. So I'll say maybe just 7.76. So that means then I get here d equals 7.76 parsec. That could be my answer. Remember, it's not in meters. This is always in parsec by definition. Or I could maybe want to know how many light years is that. Well, then I just have to multiply by 3.26 because there are 3.26 light years for every one parsec. If I multiply these together, top times the top, uh, that means I'd also have the parsec down here, would cancel out that parsec over there, so I would end up with, let me just uh, remove that just so it doesn't look confusing. That means I would just have this number right here, times 3.26, times 3.26. I would end up with an answer of, oh, 25 light years, roughly. So I could say then the distance is approximately equal to 25 light years. So that's also, I suppose, you could say that's also the answer. They're both correct. So that's how we can solve for something. Now you might wonder, is there an equation or is there a way to solve for d in general all the time? And yes, there certainly is. We've sort of seen it there. So in general, how to solve for d. So I just, I always like to have an equation in general. So, I mean, of course, I don't memorize this. I just figure it out as I go along. But it is actually kind of a good uh, experiment to do that. So I want to have m minus m equals 5 log of d over 10. What I'm going to attempt to do then is to solve for d. So the very first thing I need to do, well, I need to get rid of the 5. So I divide both sides by 5. So I'll have m minus m over 5 equals log of d over 10. It's essentially what I've just done before. I'm just showing you in general how it works. Well, then I want to undo the log in order to get at d. So to undo the log, I take 10 to the power of both sides. That means 10 to the power of, this may look ugly, but it's 10 to the power of you know, m minus m over 5. That equals d over 10. And therefore, if I want d in general, then d is just going to be, well, I have to multiply everything by 10. So I could say d then is 10 times 10 to the power of m minus m over 5. This will work always. So no matter what your absolute magnitude is and no matter what your apparent magnitude is, you can now calculate d. But I don't think there's any point in really memorizing this equation. What I like to do is I just work it out. I just take my time and just solve it as I need.
Because maybe um, you know the distance and you're interested in the absolute magnitude. That means you'd be wanting to solve for capital M. Well, then obviously that trick wouldn't work because this is only helping you to solve for D. If you want to get M by itself, of course, you could do that. You could take your time and get it. Or if you wanted little m, well, that would actually be easy. Little m would be the easiest because, of course, it would just be, if you wanted this, little m would just be um, 5 log of D over 10, and I would just add M to it. So that would be pretty easy if I wanted to just find little m. And if I wanted to find uh, big M, of course, I could just do M minus 5 log D over 10. And that would equal capital M. I suppose I could say it the other way around just to make it a little bit clearer. I could say, you know, this is also the same. I mean, it's, uh, in other words, I can solve for just D or just little M or just big M. Right? It doesn't really matter what I'm trying to do here. This could totally work. But I think this is the more complicated one here, is how to get D by itself. So I'm going to maybe go like this, maybe put a line right here and say, or you can get a little M by itself, or you can get big M by itself. But the key was to get D on its own here. That was the key here. So I hope that makes it clear that although this scale seems a bit crazy with the logs, it's still totally doable. And it actually uses the same physics behind the other method we learned about where we had the absolute and apparent, uh, well, the absolute and apparent magnitudes uses the same physics as the apparent brightness and luminosity method. So although the equations look different, it's the same sort of physics going on here. That something, if the two things have the same intrinsic luminosity, then the one that's farther away appears dimmer. Just like if two things have the same intrinsic absolute magnitude, the farther one appears dimmer. You just have to remember that magnitude use a backward scale. Just keep that in mind. That's something that's, you know, zero you might think is not very bright, but it's actually quite bright compared to something that's, let's say, 21. That's very, very dim.